Hi, my name is Stephen McGee, I'm the author of Toxic Health. We're going to look into one of the subjects of toxic health, and that is the electromagnetic fields around things like these curly fluorescent light bulbs and conventional light bulbs. I'm going to show you why you don't want to have these in your house. Uh, there's quite a few problems with them. Uh, a lot of people are actually reporting uh, health problems around compact fluorescent lights. And I'm going to show you the fields that we can detect coming off compact fluorescent lights. We're going to contrast them to a conventional filament light bulb. So to start off with, we're going to test our conventional light bulb with an AM radio for radio fields and a tri-field meter. So we're going to start off our magnetic 0 to 100 and let's see what we can find with our light bulb. So right next to the light bulb we actually have no detectable magnetic field on the 0 to 100 range nor on the cable. So we switch to electric we see that we have a small electric field that we can detect on the cable and no detectable, in fact it's about two the field on electric at the light bulb. So let's switch over to radio and microwave and we have no detectable radio or microwave fields around either the bulb or its cable. And the final test we're going to do is with the AM radio. It's just a standard AM radio. We tuned in to 530 on the AM band. And that's because there's no radio stations in this area. And we're looking for wide band radio fields. So they'll show up anywhere on the AM radio dial. So you're just looking for an area on the AM dial that is very quiet with no radio station. And let's turn on the radio and let's see what we can find. So no detectable fields on the radio. So now let's change out this light bulb for a compact fluorescent. Now, by most people's standards, uh, these are actually a toxic product. You know, it's a wonder they're actually allowed into shops and into people's homes and workplaces because of what I'm about to show you. And these effects are well known and they're very easy to detect. Uh, a tri-field meter is about $130, so they're not relatively to pay in health insurance, a tri-field meter is quite cheap. So we're going to start off on the magnetic. Let's see what we can find. So we're actually off the scale at the light bulb for magnetic fields. So very, very different to what we had before. And it's actually gone up down at the cable. So we're actually picking up a 4 milligauss magnetic field down at the cable. So let's switch over to electric and see what we find. And we've got a very high electric field around this light bulb. It's crazy how high this electric field is around this light bulb. And it quite shocked me when I actually discovered that the fields are actually so high and it's actually on the cable as well but right around the light bulb the field is extending out probably about three feet from the light bulb and this is not a very high powered light bulb this is probably a 60 watt equivalent light bulb so it's maybe about a 10 watt compact fluorescent So let's switch over to radio and microwave and see what we find. Okay. So it doesn't appear to be producing any radio or microwave fields, but from previous testing I know that the tri field is not as sensitive as an AM radio. So we're going to switch over to the AM radio as before. 
tuned in to AM530, which is static in my area. It's a very quiet part of the radio band. And uh, let's turn it on and see. So, just as the tri field told us, there's about a three foot field of radio waves around these light bulbs. And it's actually on the cable. As you can see, it actually goes all the way down the cable into the household wiring, all the frequencies that are coming off this light bulb onto the electrical system. And I, earlier today, actually did this experiment using an oscilloscope, and you can't see the radio frequencies that it generates uh, with an oscilloscope, and that's because the electrical utility system has turned into quite a dirty electrical system with all the electrical and electronic loads that are on it today. And uh, my assumption is that the reason why I can't see the radio frequencies on the oscilloscope is because there's so many radio frequencies already on the system that it, the, the radio frequencies that this light bulb is generating into the system uh, are just being lost into the general noise that the utility system has on it. So it's an interesting effect and because there's so many issues with electromagnetic interference from these light bulbs compared to our conventional light bulb is the reason why I actually tell people to stick with the conventional filament light bulbs. And uh, my current assessment of the situation is, is if you fill your home with these compact fluorescent light bulbs, you may actually be creating a ticking health time bomb. And this is particularly important around young children and babies, as uh, the last thing you want in your home around young children and babies is very strange electromagnetic interference fields. And Dr. John Nash Ott extensively developed the field of electro electromagnetic interference back in the 1950s, and if you want to find out more about it, you can read about it in Toxic Health, or you can read about it in Dr. John Nash Ott's books on the subject. And uh, it's a very interesting subject, it's very well defined, it was very well defined in the 1950s. And uh, because it's so well defined in the 1950s, one has to wonder why these compact fluorescent light bulbs are on general sale today, when they are actually according to many people, affecting people's health. I hope you enjoyed this presentation, and I wish you the very best of health. Thank you.